Hello my friends and welcome to a Battletech Tactics Guide. It's been a while. Um, this guide is on critical thinking and ammunition. Now, I've been thinking for a long time on how to explain critical thinking as a concept. Um, and then I saw this ancient Facebook puzzle picture and it just gave me the perfect idea of, of how to explain it and just how difficult it is to actually get the right answer or to think of correct answers outside of the obvious one, the, the answer that's presented to you on a plate. So <clears throat> anyway, some of you might recognize this ancient picture. I couldn't find it in higher quality, but anyway, here it is. Um, it's a classic, classic old picture of um, a teacup this is the original one, uh, teapot filling teacups. And um, I saw this doing the rounds on Facebook yet again. And uh, it just occurred to me um, that this picture is the perfect explanation about how so many people get um, critical thinking wrong because the what you're supposed to do is apparently obvious, but actually the answer, the the truth, the reality might be something completely different. So you look at this puzzle and um, you look at the comments on Facebook or whatever, um, it's probably not unrealistic to say that 95, 96% of people say that the answer to this puzzle is five. and it seems obvious that it would be five because you see that four is blocked off. I'm, I'm looking at the side screen here. In fact, I'll just move this to the front screen so I can look more at the camera. There we go. Um, so uh, four is blocked off. Nine is also blocked off. <clears throat> Seven is also blocked off and that leaves five. That's the answer, right? And if you thought that, that was the answer, then 96% of people would agree with you. However, <laughs> my answer to this puzzle is completely different. Um, and it was my first time sitting down and like looking at this stupid puzzle. And then I realized that whoever came up with this, and this is the original one, is probably laughing at the rest of humanity right now because so if you look at the if you look at the size of the teapot, right, everything in this drawing is a 2D representation of a 3D object. That's what we're going to presume here because, you know, we know that cups are three-dimensional and teapots are three-dimensional and obviously this uh, this water tank system cannot be 2D either because, you know, then water wouldn't flow through it. So they, all of these objects must be three-dimensional. And you can basically presume that they're all as three-dimensional as each other. So when you look at that and you look at the size of the teapot, you presume that as a physical object of that particular size, you can measure the size of that teapot, its area. And if you realize, or if you, if you think about it for a bit, the area of that teapot is less than the actual, the actual storage of the water tank system. So if you fill up this middle tank, and then you go to the, uh, the, the water will then, um, from your perspective, it's, it will go to the left towards the, the nine cup and it will fill up that tank. And then when that tank is full, it will then go to the right and fill up the two tanks next to the seven and five cups. And then eventually it will get to the five cup. But the thing is, the area of those tanks is greater than the area of the teapot. So... Presuming that the teapot isn't a magical portal to the tea dimension, none of the cups will fill. <laughs> the correct answer is none of them. Because there's, there's more room in the water tanks than there is in the teapot. So by the time that there, you eventually put enough tea into the system to overcome the water tanks to reach cup five, you've actually run out of tea. So... <laughs> <laughs> that's the answer <laughs> and no one or almost no one I mean I didn't look through 
100,000 comments, but I looked through about 300 comments and no one suggested that this was the answer to this puzzle. Now, I actually have another answer to this puzzle, which is let's presume that the teapot is infinite and that, you know, we, we definitely mu we must fill a cup before we stop. Well, then there's another solution to this puzzle. You see here the choke between the middle the middle container and the the right hand side where where teacup number five is, which we would eventually fill, presuming that we just pour water into the system nonstop. That choke is very thin. And the actual rate of pouring, according to the diagram, is actually incredibly great relative to the choke of the of the water system so you can see where I'm going with this 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 is show how much of an engineer I am <laughs> um, if you were to pour infinitely at that rate the middle tank is likely to overflow and it would overflow faster than the water system could potentially fill and thus relieve the pressure into cup number five which means that actually in the infinite infinite flow scenario um, the water well the tea would overfill the top of the middle tank and go to the right and left and fill four and seven simultaneously and then at some point after that which we could calculate based on the width of this little of the of the choke compared to the width of the T, which I estimate to be about a third. So after uh, after the point at which four and seven fills and relative to filling up these two tanks, the fifth cup will eventually start to fill, but this will be long after seven and four have overflowed. But obviously, because um, the T is going straight into the middle container and there's a you know, there's an amount of liquid above that, and we presume that the flow never stops. Five will eventually fill as well, but in terms of which one will get f filled first, in that scenario, the the potential answer, or what's almost certainly the answer, is four and seven simultaneously together will become filled first. Um, although, obviously, the the path between the two is slightly different, so maybe one of them potentially fills fractions of a second faster before five does. In fact, the only solution or the only situation by which five is the actual answer is if you pour the tea in at a rate not exceeding the choke and you have an infinite amount. But the puzzle picture, the diagram, does not support that as as the problem. <laughs> So you actually have to contrive yourself to to make that the answer. I genuinely think that the answer that whoever made this came up with, if they were thinking about it at all, and from the tiny choke here and the fact that the water tanks are just like about 10% bigger than the size of the teapot, they probably were thinking about it. The real answer here is that... Um, None of them fill because there isn't enough tea in the teapot to fill any of the cups. Um, by the time you fill the water system to get to number five, the only unblocked cup, you've run out of tea. Right? Now, potentially, going on a sample of Facebook comments that I looked at, no one or less than 1% or less than 0.5% of people even considered this to be an answer to the puzzle. And so I wanted to move into ammunition because this is one thing that I think people really sort of misunderstand about Battletech. I mean, teaching you critical thinking is good. It will make you a better strategy gamer, but how does it apply to Battletech? Well, um, ammunition is limited, right? But it's not something that we generally think about in terms of the enemy. We are presented with the enemy and our objective is which enemy dies first, right? It's the same kind of thought process. We're here to, to kill the enemy and we, not, we don't really think about how much ammunition they've got. 
Um, and, you know, in most cases, you kill, them, kill the enemy long before their ammunition runs out. But one strategy which I have used against particular mechs, um, the Jaeger mech in particular, trebuchets and catapults, is to just jump your whole team around, generating four or five evasion tokens, and then to brace repeatedly. Why? Well, their ammunition is limited, and you can, by jumping and bracing, especially with Bulwark, you can turn their potential damage, so the potential damage of an ammo can of LRM missiles, right? You've got 120 missiles, times 4 is 480. You can potentially reduce that potential damage down to about 25% by jump bracing constantly. Um, maybe even a little bit less than that. Because a lot of the missiles will miss and those that hit will only do 40% damage. So, if you reduce each ammo can down to 120 damage, that's not much. That's, you know, that's a quarter of the potential. And that's not a lot of damage, really. Most mediums will easily shrug off 120 damage, especially spread about their person. Uh, heavies and assaults can easily afford to lose 120 points of, of armor. Now, a lot of these mech designs have only got two ammo cans. Some of them have got three, um, but a lot of them have just got two. Maybe some of the designs have got four. Well, four ammo cans um, with the damage reduced severely is still only 480 damage, which you can spread about your mechs by offering different ones as a target, etc. It is very possible in Battletech to neutralize a team of missile boats by simply tanking out their, their ammunition until it runs out, by absolutely maximizing your defensiveness, by jump bracing, four or five evasion tokens and a 60% damage reduction. You can drain the enemy of ammunition and then engage them once the ammunition is gone. Because if you engage them straight up, of course, then there is a potential for you to be out of cover or out of position or to have your evasion stripped by the whole enemy team and all that kind of thing. And so you'll take a lot more of that potential damage. Um, but what I'm saying is that you know, if you're facing off against a team of four trebuchets, instead of going out into the open and trying to fight them, it might actually make sense to just jump a mech out, tank the missiles, jump that one back in, jump another mech out, tank the missiles, repeat. And within about four or five turns, they'll be out of missiles, and they might have done about 120, 150 damage to each one of your mechs. And they've used up half, three quarters, all of their ammo, depends on how long you want to go go on with this this tanking for. Um, and vehicles can run out of ammunition, by the way, although I don't think it ever really makes sense to try and run a vehicle out of ammunition because of how front-loaded they are and how easy they are to kill. But it is, poten it is uh, possible to run vehicles out of ammunition as well. All I'm saying is... When you approach the game, when you approach Battletech, and you look at the enemy op 4, just have a think around, around the box of just which mech is the most dangerous or which mech is the softest, and how fast can I kill it, and then I can move on to the next target. Sometimes it can make sense to actually draw in the heavier, tankier targets and take them down, and just play an incredibly defensive game, tanking the fire support. Because if you tank the fire support really effectively, they will be out of ammunition long before they've done any real damage. And then, it's a pretty easy cleanup from that point on. Um, it's a strategy that I've used against particularly trebuchets, because they're very missile loaded, but also Jaegers. And um, something like a Hunchback, with its AC-20, is a is also a mech that you can tank down. And you may think to yourself, well, that's frightening dealing with an AC-20. I want that gone ASAP. But with uh, four or five evasion tokens and a 60% reduction, you're looking at 40 damage per hit if it hits. And you'll maybe see only 
one in two shots or, or even one in three shots actually hit you, which means that that hunchback is only going to do 80 or 120 damage total per one ton of ammunition. And that's, uh, that's a bad trade for the hunchback. Um, I feel like some of these lessons may apply more to multiplayer than single player, but it's just something to think about. So anyway, that's it. That's all I wanted to talk about. I hope you enjoyed this little bit of critical thinking and maybe it gives you some ideas for uh, your play going forward. All right, next time.